The following program is sponsored in part by the friends and partners of Philip Goodo Ministries and Calvary Christian Center. Welcome to Philip Goodo Ministries. Now here's Pastor Goodo. I, told, I tell them all the time, they're going through a divorce. I say, don't say nothing negative about your wife to your children. You're not winning by trying to put your wife down. Wife, don't say nothing negative about your husband. It might be true, but don't you open your mouth. Don't you let yourself get to the place where you're starting to put them down in front of your kids because you think you're going to gain the kids by trying to put the wife down or the husband down, but you're going to lose the kids and you got a door open that shouldn't be open. And some people wonder why some things are not being restored to them, why some things ain't cracking, popping, snapping, and happening in their life, because you got a big mouth. That's what the problem is. Turn to your neighbor and say, uh-oh, he's talking about somebody close to you. So God doesn't tell us to punch out people, balloons. Doesn't tell us to punch out people, balloons. Tells us to help lift up people. Pray for them. Help them to make sure. Look at me in Proverbs 10 and 12. At the King James Version. I'm going to look at a few different ones out of this. Proverbs 10 and 12 of the King James Version says, Hate, say what? Hate. Say it loud. Hate. Stirs up what? Right. Or division, confusion, and opens up doors. Hate stirs up strife, but love covers a multitude or covers all sins, all sin. I had to learn this. I've been, I've been in the negative factor as a pastor because I didn't understand what I'm telling you, and they didn't teach it in Bible school, and nobody else taught it to me, and I had to learn this the tough way because I didn't know that people would be mean to you as a pastor. I didn't know people would take advantage of you as a pastor. I didn't know. I got hurt on my job and got prejudice and fighting against me because I was black. I could go on and on. So my whole Christian life, I've had to learn how to walk, and I thank God for the Holy Spirit. Anybody ever heard of him? Thank God for the, anybody heard of the Holy Ghost? (laughs) The power of God. You need the power of God to help you to be able to walk in the love because you can't walk in this supernatural love, and I'm not talking about philemo. I'm talking about agape. I'm talking about the highest form of love that can love and forgive and release and move on with your life. Turn to somebody and say, I'm so glad you're here to hear this tonight. I'm about to shout for you right now. I'm about to shout for you. Listen what the AMPC uh, says on the same channel. They said, hate shares up what? Contentions, but love covers all transgressions Every negative thing that somebody's ever done to you, love covers it. Come on, shout it out. Love covers it. Get your hands up and say, Lord, help me to love on that level. Shout it out. Lord, help me to love on that level, to cover every one, not not to uncover it, not to run around and try to tell everybody what somebody did to me and how they hurt me and want to make them look as bad as I can. That's not your job. Your job is to cover and to pray for them and forgive them so you can keep moving on. It was an attack against you, (coughs) an attack against you to keep you from experiencing the favor of God, the blessing of God, your prayers from being answered because you took it so personal. Hate stirs up. Continue. I know it's a hard word, but it, it, this being embittered, right. unforgiving. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. Hate stirs up contentions, but love covers all transgressions. Amen. Man, look at that. Ain't that something? Romans 7, Romans 4 and 7. Look at me in Romans 4 and 7. So you will never make your light brighter by trying to put out somebody else's light. (laughs) 
You know, when people are talking down about somebody, trying to make them look as bad as they can, they're talking about them and trying to put them down because they're trying to make their light brighter and put their light out. But your light will never get brighter when you're trying to put somebody else's out. God help me now just to go ahead and, and release that, let it go, walk in the love of God, and let God start showing himself strong because God is a great rewarder. Are y'all with me? And he rewards you when you walk in love, but he doesn't reward you when you walk in bitterness and unforgiveness and hurt and, 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 and offense. It doesn't work that way. See, what God is trying to do tonight, even right now, for you that are watching me right now, for you that are, God's trying to heal some relationships tonight and trying to save your future and trying to keep your life moving forward so he can be the God of more than enough in your life. His name is El Shaddai. I'm the God of more than enough. And I declare the God of more than enough is going to break open some things in your life that some people are going to be amazed at what God has done for you. And it's not because you had such great faith. It's just because you chose to walk in love and not to uncover, but to cover. Yeah. Let the healing begin tonight. Let the deliverance begin tonight. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to hold on to my old ugly past. The word, the word to forgive in the Hebrew word, to release it means to be able to cut it loose. Yeah. Cut it loose. Don't drag it around with you. It's, it's an it's a old negative situation, and I'm just dragging that old dead situation around with me. It's stinking, and you stink along with it. So let's quiet in this. <laughs> Look what it says here. Look what it says. Romans 4 and 7, it says, Bless, what's the first word? Bless. And what? Happy. And to be envied are those whose iniquities, transgressions, are forgiven and whose sins are covered up. I'm one of those. I thank God for that. Amen. Thank God for forgiveness of sin and uh, completely, look what it said, and completely buried. <laughs> and completely buried. Completely buried. I can, I, can, I can forgive you and see you again and don't trip with you. Talk to me, somebody. Somebody said, well, I forgave you, but don't let me ever see you again. <laughs> I'm, I'm still mad at you. I just, I'm only can walk in forgiveness as long as I don't see you. <laughs> Go back. Let me read it one more time. I'm sorry. I, I got I to look here. Let me look. look one. Bless. Come on, shout it out. And, and to be envied are those whose iniquities, sins are forgiven and whose sins are covered up and completely buried. So when I see you again, I won't be tripping when I see you. I was called to a hospital one time to pray with a person that it was on the verge of death. They only gave them a few hours or a couple days to live, and they asked me to come and pray with them. And I came up to the hospital. I didn't really know who it was, but because they just told me and begged me to come, I went up there, all kind of people around there. And when I went into the room, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't pray for them until they forgive. And I never had that happen to me before. Don't pray for them until, you, until they forgive. So then I, I said to the lady, and she got all these machines hooked up to her. They, they only given her a few moments, and then I said, I said, I said, I can't pray for you. I'm here to pray for you, but I can't pray for you until you forgive, until you release, until you let go. And she said, she broke down and started crying. She said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm jumping right now. I'm coming back to that one. I'm in this service, in a service here. We got a miracle, a miracle and healing, deliverance services going on, people getting healed. God is doing things. And the Lord speaks to me and said, go back to this lady. She's about four rows from the back. And said, go to her and tell her I'm ready. He said, tell her I'm ready to manifest on her behalf. That's what I, the word I got. I walked back there too and I said, the Lord said he's ready to manifest on your behalf. 
She said, if I got to forgive my husband, I will go to hell first. And you know what I wanted to say? Then go to hell. But I can't say that as a pastor. I probably can't say that, shouldn't say it right now, huh? But she said, I'll go to hell before I forgive my husband for what he did to me. And she going to bust hell wide open. And the issue is that when this lady was in the hospital, I said, you got to forgive. And she started crying. And she said, I don't know if I can do it and this and that. And I said, if you want to get out of this hospital room, God spoke to me and told me, you got to forgive. You got to release it and let it go and, and, and cover it up. You got to move on with your life. You're here, you die, and they still out there living their life. <laughs> I finally talked to her for a little bit. She finally forgave. She, I prayed with her, believed God for her miracle, and the next day or the day after that, here she is out of the hospital. I don't know, two, maybe three weeks went by. She got a miraculous deliverance. Everybody's talking about her deliverance, how God healed her and delivered her. Let, well, let me ask a question. Am I in the right church? Yes. Do, do y'all believe in God can heal and deliver people? Do you believe he's a miracle-working God? He's bigger than you could even imagine. And here she is about maybe three weeks, four weeks into walking in health, being delivered from the spirit of death, and over in the art mall, runs into her, her ex. And when she saw him, he was with his, the girl, the woman that he that walked, left her for. And when she saw him, she went into an angry rage, got embittered and resentful, and started hollering and screaming. And two days later, she was dead. So it's not good enough. <laughs> that was my, it's not good enough. <laughs> it's not good enough for you to say, I forgive him. You got to cover it. That means I can't talk about it no more. I release it. I bury it. Is that what it says? And completely buried it. So when it tries to cut back up because the devil is going to try to make it bring come back in your life so he can be able to do and finish the work. Y'all got me hollering at y'all. <laughs> y'all got me hollering at y'all. And completely annihilate and destroy everything good that God wants to do in your life. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, and you watching me right now. How many of y'all believe that God has more he wants to do in your life than where you are right now? He ain't finished with none of y'all. I said he ain't finished with none of you. God's got bigger things in life, and the only thing, there you go, come on, bring it back down, Phil. And the only thing that is going to bring God's manifested power in your life the way you want to is walking in love, and love covers Amen. a multitude of transgressors. Not just to say, I forgive them, but I can be around them and not still bring it up and not let it dominate my life. Are you with me? Okay, let me give you a couple more, then I won't stop. Y'all glad you came? Look at same verse, give it to me at the Passion Translation. Look at the Passion Translation. And it says, here's what David said. What happy fulfillment is headed for those whose rebellion has been forgiven and whose sins are covered by the blood. Now, I'm talking about anybody in here? Anybody been rebellious? Anybody been stupid, been dumb in your life, crazy? But we declare today that the blood has covered you, that you've been forgiven and released from every negative thing in the name of Jesus. And now the blessing of God is upon your life for greater and bigger things. And I'm not going to disrupt the blessing of God on my life by allowing myself to get angry and go backwards when God's trying to push me forward. Y'all with me? Yes. Look in the Message Bible, 20, Proverbs 25. I'm sorry, you don't need to look in the Message. Proverbs 25 and 2 out of the Message Bible. And look what it says in Proverbs 25 
in verse 2, and it says, God delights in concealing a thing. God delights in concealing a thing. Scientists delight in discovering things. Well, since you're not a scientist, be like God. He delights in concealing a thing, not going around trying to tell everybody what they, somebody did to them and all that kind of stuff and trying to make everybody around you look as bad as you can. Are you with me? Okay, look with me also in the same verse out of the New King James Version. is that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of a king is to what? Search out a matter, to check it out. And this isn't the matter we're checking up, but I'm not going to allow myself to be able to uh, be around here and expose and, 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 and allow the enemy to allow me to be running around here, running my mouth about what happened to me. Now, we got to understand something. That there's power in your words. Words are powerful. We need to understand that Proverbs 18:21 says, uh, words have the power to bring what? Life or death. So be careful if you talk a lot. <laughs> so be careful if you talk a lot. Turn to the neighbor and say, I'm praying for you right now because you, somebody, you talk too much. <laughs> they carry life or death. I got to be careful how I talk. Now, real quickly, four ways to cover. Here we go. Four ways to cover. Number one, I cover somebody in prayer. Number two, I cover them with my words, speaking life or giving words over them. Number three, by my actions, my giving and my helping. I cover people, I cover a situation by my actions through giving and helping. And number four, being there for them, even if they had hurt me, even if they let me down. Once I've forgiven them, they were stupid, they could have been crazy, whatever the case is, but I chose to forgive and to release, and now I can go back and still help them through that. See, what God can do through your stupid decisions in your life is being able to not only forgive you, but then help restore you back. All of us in here, maybe except me, but all of y'all in here have made some wrong choices in your life. Hello, somebody. But now, God, we can get restored back and be able to be right where God wants us to be and to help one another. Am I right or wrong? Are you with me? So, so in, in, in Genesis, you can just look it up. In Genesis, the ninth chapter, basically verse 20 through 23, we see here where that Noah had, uh, was a husbandman or he was dealing with... Uh, raising grapes and the lonely line, and he drank of his, the, 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 and made wine and got drunk. And when his sons came in there, they saw him drunk, so drunk, Noah, and he was naked. Now, naked Noah just saved the whole world. But now Noah then made a stupid decision, and he raised these grapes and now got drunk and now he's in this cave or this place, and he's drunk and, uh, and, is, and, and naked. His sons that are covering him went around talking about their daddy. They talked about him instead of covering him. And when this, he uh, heard about it, when his older brother heard about it, he went in and got another servant and they bagged in, wouldn't even look at their father's nakedness, and bagged in and covered him up. Right. See, because love covers. Amen. It doesn't uncover, it covers. Amen. They went around talking about it, and they became cursed because of their talking about their father and exposing his nakedness and his shame. Right. But then the ones that walked in backed up, became blessed, and God honored them in the ninth chapter of Genesis, and God honored them because they chose to be able to cover and not expose. Hear me now. When you're going to have choices in your life, and you did a watchman right now, you're going to have choices in your life to be able to 
cover or expose. And once you start exposing, the blessing will lift off your life. Everything good that God wants to do in your life will be gone out of your life. You won't have the greater things that he wants to do on your behalf. You got to learn how, God, if I can't say something good, I just won't say nothing at all. I'm not going to run around and uncover, but I'm going to be uh, a blessing and a help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, thank you for these men and women here tonight. Thank you for manifesting your power and your presence for the area to forgive, to release, and let go of every hurt, every pain, every negative situation that has arised in their life to steal their faith, their authority, their favor with you and man, to steal their health and everything good that you want to do in their life. I pray tonight on this 13th day of August that tonight is a supernatural turnaround night tonight. In the behalf of marriages, friendships, family members, co-workers, no longer will we hold on to the hurts of the past, but we will cut them and sever them and walk in agape love towards everybody. Come on, y'all. Everybody in the name of Jesus. Raise your hands up. Raise them up and say, Father, I choose to live a life of walking in love to forgive, to release, to let go every hurt, every pain, every negative situation that has assaulted me. I choose not to be embittered. I choose not to run around offended, but I choose to walk in love and I thank you that love, come on, that love covers. Help me, Holy Spirit, to cover every situation, every negative thing that has attacked my love walk, attacked my faith, attacked my favor with you and man. I bury them. I bury every negative situation. It will never be brought back up again. Come on, it will never be brought back up again in my life. I walk in the love of God all the days of my life. Now shout about it right now. Shout about it right now. Now, there's some of you, in order for you to move your life forward, you're going to have to go back to the person. Call them, text them, email them, however you got to do it, and say, listen, even though they did you wrong, I choose to forgive you and release you and let you go. They did you wrong, but it's going to take a bigger person, talk to me, to forgive and release someone to go. So I got a, a father calls me, and I never met the father, but he, his son is one of my elders here in the church. I had no idea that he was angry and embittered against his father. I had no idea of the how they had not talked in over 20-something years. His father called me up and said, Pastor Godot, I'm on my deathbed. Would you please 
asked my son to come and see me before I die. He was out of state. I went to the son and I said, I didn't know that you had were angry against your father. Well, he did this, and he didn't treat us right, and he did this, and he did that, and he just went on and on. I said, well, your father's dying, and he called and asked me, would you please come and see him before he died? He said, I won't go. I don't ever want to see him. I don't care if he died. I said, well, is Christ in your life? Did God forgive you? Can't you forgive your daddy? Can't you release him? How would you expect God to bless you when you can't even forgive your father? Well, you don't know what he did. I don't need to know what he did. I just need to know that you were going to do what you're supposed to do. Amen. And I'm asking you as your pastor, and you're calling me dad, I'm asking you, go and see your father and forgive him and release him before he dies. He got there two hours before his father died. When his father saw him, he cried and started rejoicing in the hospital room and said, all I wanted before I leave, I've been hanging in here, praying and just believing, son, that you would come, that I could ask you to forgive me for whatever I did to hurt you and separate us. I just want you to forgive. I don't want you carrying this on your back. I don't want the enemy to destroy your life the way he destroyed mine. And I'm asking you, son, to forgive me. They both cried. And when he came back here, he was a different man because I'm telling you, God is a healing God. God is a delivering God. Excuse me, God is a miracle-working God. And his miracle-working power is in here tonight to turn some situations around to manifest his power and presence on your behalf. But you can't play church in here. You got to get real that you're going to live for God and you're going to obey what his word says so God can manifest his miracle working power in your behalf. So I'm praying for y'all and you watching me right now. I'm praying that if you're holding on to something and what they did to you was wrong no matter what it was, I hate to say it that way, but it's more important for you what God wants to do in your future and in your life than where you are right now. Don't let the enemy continually steal, kill, and destroy your life. Are you with me? Now thank you for it now, Father. Thank you for giving them the boldness, the supernatural strength, uh, the courage, the power to confront and release to however they got to do it, but get it out. <laughs> quit, Father, I pray that they will quit waiting on them to try to come to them, but they'll go. Through text, phone call, email, letters, however they got to do it. But thank you for a new beginning and a breakthrough moment in their lives. Hallelujah.